Hello once again, anyone and everyone. Uh, I gave Duncan a gun. That's what you missed. I was just... Ooh. What is this? I know, oh, holy jeepers, Lorenzo. What the fuck's going on around here? Although, you know, this is a world where magic exists. Along with techno babble. No? Nothing? Alright. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Go down here. <laughs> Whoever's down here is having a sale. Uh, oh, drones! <sighs> Yo, let me, uh, let me, let me at your drones here. I got drones, I connect with them psychically. Cause I'm awesome! No? Alright. Be that way, I guess. I will just go down here. And, um, yeah. More down here. Where the fuck am I even going? Where did I come from? Right there. Okay. I explored down there, now I'm exploring the docks. Okay. Alright. 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 Right. I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Look at this place. It's so cool. I don't know why Asian cities and cyberpunk settings are always like the best places. Uh, is this where I need to go? Oh. Yeah, it is. Holy crap. I don't want to be here yet then. I want to continue looking around. God, I'm really glad I don't got to do that guy's voice anymore. And, oh. The original name has been sloppily painted over with black paint. Newer but somewhat weathered characters have been painted in bold brush strokes. <laughs> that read bolt hole. I read that as something different. I'm not going to say what. guy that sells drones, but I guess that was it. And it was a lady. Dobermen. Dobermen! What does this guy want? Frederick Cafe. <laughs> Frederick Cafe. Let's go to your friend. The club is members and invite only. I suggest you just move along. Uh, come on, man. My friends are already inside. Can I just go look around for a second? No. Hmm. Well, you sound like a weirdo. Club 88. What's this guy want? Triad Guard. The entrance to the walled city is closed to, for for to foreigners. Um, I'm gonna go anyway? No? Okay. Oh my god, I gotta sneeze so bad! Ugh! Oh. Alright, looks like we explored. We explored, guys. Oh wait, no, I wanted to go this way again. I wanted to, uh... Oh, here he is. Talk to the medical clinic guy. See if I can't get away in there. Uh, I'm on a job for kindly. Uh, you and every other hood in the Hong Kong.
on, come back if you get some wheels or around here, otherwise fuck off. So I told you to fuck off. I'm one of Kindly's people, really, huh? I'll just check that. Fuck off. Well. Uh, we may have just got caused a little trouble by lying about being well, I mean, yeah. Man, these guys really can book it when they want to. <laughs> this place is cool. Come in. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, I didn't lie. You can feel every eye in the room as you cross the mahjong parlor in the, to the middle-aged woman. I burped. Sitting patiently at its end, the click-clack of ivory-colored tiles stops. Hands stray beneath tables into jacket pockets behind backs. The woman has her face, has the face of a prison guard and the demeanor of an inmate. Her salt and pepper hair is pulled into an iron hard bun, and beneath it, two shiny black eyes offer nothing. Buttons sewn onto a doll. A nearly empty bottle of something foul rests at her mahjong table. Nestled between a pair of dirty shot glasses, tiny puddles of brown liquor at the at their bottoms. Gobbit and Isabel stand on the, on the other side of the table. Heads lowered, shoulders slumps, hands clasped. They risk a frightened glance at you as you approach. Kindly- Oh god, she does have the face of a prison guard! Kindly Cheng's voice is nasal and rusty mean. My little pair of fuck-ups here told me all about what happened at the docks. She dips a pickle- Oh, a pinky! God damn it, dyslexia! Into a shot glass. Brings it to her mouth, removes it with a sharp smack. How two of my best runners had their heads put out. How, uh, how you need protection. And how you need to get your identities wiped before you get your heads put out too. Potentially lead, leading the heart of my front door. Placing me and everyone in my employ in danger. She fingers the rim of her glass. So wise. So very, very wise. The young sh shaman's eyes never leave the floor. We sorry, auntie. We thought... Her black eyes flash. You mustn't speak until you are spoken to, gobbit dear. The smile turns mean. And since you are one short hair away from being dumped in the river, chained to Isabel's corpse... I suggest you let your new friends here do the talking for a while. Don't? Does that make sense to you, dear? Her trestle voice is back, sweet, nasal, and grinding. Dark circles ring Gobbit's armpits. Yeah. Yes, auntie. Cheng inclines her head gently. Very good. You learn quickly. Remain silent. She pours another drink. I was gonna be like, hey, 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 but then I'm like, mm, no. She pours another drink. Her cheeks are rosy, already flushed. Now, my darlings, I understand a little rat shit here that you came... Oh, from little rat shit here that you came from Seattle to meet with my client, Mr. Black. Wood's jaw tightens at the word client. But before you could find him, the HKPF started splattering gray matter everywhere, and everyone, everything went to shit. And now you need your sins burned so you can disappear before you end up dead too, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Why don't we start with you telling me who you are? My name is Chell. And have you got a first name, Chell? A profession? I mean, you do want me to erase your identities, don't you, dear? 
I need to know who you are first. Jemmy, I'm a rigger. She rests her chin on her hand. Oh my my, it's still hard to believe someone can put their mind into a drone. Amazing. And how did you become a rigger, Jemmy? Uh... Picked it up young. I've been in the cooler for a few. Moo's brow furrows and he shakes his head. Still can't believe it. Kindly Chang whips her head towards Wu, a nasty retort already on her lips. But then she stops, sticks out her lower lip as she sizes him up. She turns to her lieutenant standing behind her, nodding her approval. Looks like the gun show is in town. What's your name, gun show? Wu's focus remains straight ahead. Duncan Wu. I'm a cop. Lone Star. I hear there were some fresh corpses found on the docks tonight. Smugglers, I believe. Didn't sound like the Hong Kong police when I heard about it. You're doing Duncan Wu? Wu's eyes remain fixed on the spot on the wall behind her. He smolders. I identified myself as Lone Star, but they wouldn't stand down. They had weapons. It was self-defense. She puckers her lips at him, her voice sing song. I don't care, sweetie. They weren't my people. But now I know you're a life taker, Mr. Gunshow. You and your friend here. She begins arranging mahjong tiles on the table in front of her. But now I'm curious, why were you meeting Raymond Black on the docks tonight? He's a friend. Said he needed our help. Oh. Should I lie? Mm, I've got I've gotten pretty far without her getting mad by telling the truth so far. So Raymond Black is our foster father. That makes her pause. Chang lifts her bottle of swill and eyes the label, connecting the dots in her own head. Interesting. A look of disgust passes over her face. Sorry, kids, but he was looking like shit when I saw him. Eyes half open, dark circles around them, dragging his feet the whole bit. She tisks in displeasure. Your foster daddy was in a bad place. Sounds like he wasn't sleeping. Could be, from what he said, it sounded like he was having nightmares. He'd stop in the middle of the sentence and mutter something to himself. One time it was about the walls breathing or something. Another time it was about teeth. Thousands of teeth. I remember him drifting off near the end of our meeting. It looked like he was off somewhere else in his head. He said, I left prosperity in there. Then Nightjar put his hand on Mr. Black's shoulder, asked him where, why he wanted to go into the walled city so badly. That seemed to bring him back. When your old man opened his eyes, they were full of tears. Then he muttered something else I couldn't make out. She pours herself another shot, tosses it back, and rubs her belly. Your daddy got really irritating after a while. I can imagine. She grabs a long, slim cigar from a pack on the mahjong table, lights it. All right, let's get to it. She exhales, exhales smoke and points two fingers at you and Wu. You two need your sins burned, and you need them burned fast. Hong Kong dragnets are bad news. When they roll the rice... The when they roll, they roll in force. Armored personnel carriers, heavy armor, heavy weapons, sorcerers, the whole thing. And they aren't coming to arrest you. She folds her arms across her chest. The thin cigar bobs in her mouth as she speaks. Good n Hold on. Hold on. Um, hold on. I got a chopstick on my desk. I'm gonna... Good news is, I can help you. With a wave of my hand, I can have your sins disappear. But you need to understand, my darlings. This isn't what you're asking for. Oh. Is that what you're asking for? Isn't some simple request? Burning a sin isn't just de deleting a number, it's waving all reference to that number from all the world's largest databases. It's masking your mugshot in your facial recognition database. I dropped the chapstick. 
Not chapstick, chopstick. <coughs> so that the first camera you walk past doesn't bring you them down on you like a ton of bricks. It's covering our fucking tracks so that the act of burning your sin doesn't lead them right to us. It requires contacts in numerous corporations and the UCAS government. Smoke rolls out of the triad boss's, triad boss's nose. It requires someone like me. Therefore, I need to make a choice. She takes another drag of her cigar and gently places her palm flat on the table. Do I kill you and dispose of your bodies before the cops come looking for you? Or do I help you burn your sins? Ah, play to her. Yeah. We're more helpful to you alive than dead. I forget what she said exactly. Though. Chen rests her chin on her hand again and smiles at you. Are you, my darling? If you're dead, things appear to be much less complicated if you're alive. She stares at you for a long moment, chin still on hand, thinking. Taps her ash on the floor without taking her eyes off you. A low, reluctant growl rumbles somewhere deep in her throat. Alright, you live for now. I'll put your sins to the torch. However, I need to call in several valuable favors within my network to do it. And those favors do not come cheap. Kindly Cheng stubs out her cigar. You will owe me. Whatever you say, auntie. Don't roll over so easily, my darling. People will think you're an ass kisser. It's unbecoming. Ah! I want you to deliver a message to me. To a business associate in the walled city. The Yellow Lotus has a strong presence inside, Jemmy. Isabel can tell you all about it, can't you, dear? Isabel grew up in the Wild City. Isabel's eyes remain lower. They collect taxes from corporations, extort protection money from shopkeepers, run drugs, guns, people. They hurt people. We do those things, yes. But to be fair, we also operate the Wild City's black market. You might not be alive today if it weren't for the lifeline that we provide. Isabel clams up tight. Cheng picks up uh, a mahjong tile and turns it with her fingers. There is a red pole, a sort of enforcer, yes? On the inside, his name is Strangler Bao. Bao is a strong man, a good soldier. But he has forgotten his place. I need you to remind him. You mean, uh, let me guess, by remind him, you mean put a bullet in his head? No, if I wanted him dead, I could have said so. Don't jump to conclusions, you aren't any good at it. I like Kindly Chang. She's like a good... Like, I, 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 I like her. <laughs> She's snarky. She tosses you a memory stick. This is a message for Bao. You will deliver it to him in my name, and then return to me. Remember, Pop Top. Those men are my men. By right, they should all be serving me. I would prefer it if you did this quietly and without killing them. I have no use for dead soldiers. She turns to Gobbit and Isabel. One of you will go with these two Westerners to the walled city, help them locate Bao, and show them the ropes. The other will remain here with me. I have several menial and degrading tasks that need doing around the establishment. No matter who goes and who stays, you'll both pay for bringing the AP an APB to my doorstep. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Now, I'm going to find out who ordered the hit on Nightjar and do some <laughs> dentistry on him with power tools. <laughs> I love her! I love Kindly Chang. She closes her eyes and smiles with pleasure. That boy was my favorite. He sang to me sometimes. She opens her eyes again and sneers. That other one I don't care about. Gunshot was an asshole. <laughs> she turns away and waves you off with a back of her hand. That would be all, my darlings. Return to me when you are done. Thanks uh, for the favor, auntie. She responds without turning back. You can thank me after you've delivered my message to Bao. Then, I'll do you the favor of erasing you. Ooh! That was a lot of text. Sorry about that, but... 
That was a lot of text, but fun text. I liked it. It was like reading a book. Um, so thank you anyone and everyone for watching. Next time, uh, I'll be back. We're going to be delivering a message to Bow! Bow? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you next time. Have a beautiful day, and I love you. Bye-bye.